When asked about achievements, most athletes will list the opportunity to represent their country as one of the highlights of their career. This is especially the case for soccer, with the World Cup being one of, if not the most anticipated sporting event worldwide. For two players from the Seattle Sounders, Gustav Svensson and Roman Torres, the 2018 World Cup in Russia is shaping up to be an exciting few weeks. I thought a great way to take a look at these players before the group stage matches get underway would be to outline their journey to qualification and also build a squad around them in the newly released FIFA 18 World Cup update. For both of their respective nations, the path to the World Cup was nothing short of dramatic. Svensson and Sweden were able to qualify by beating a defensively strong Italy side over two legs in November 2017. Svensson himself played an important role in these matches, having to come on as a starter with limited notice and still helping his team achieve a clean sheet. In terms of his playing style, I personally feel that one of Svensson's strongest assets is his versatility. He's played a number of roles for the Sounders in the last two years, and I think that's a testament to how well he reads the pitch. For a Sweden team that doesn't lack attacking options, having an experienced player like Svensson in the defense or midfield will prove to be a valuable option. Heading into the World Cup, many consider Roman Torres to be one of Panama's most influential players, and for good reason. His goal in the 87th minute helped Panama secure a 2-1 win over Costa Rica and qualify for the nation's first World Cup. Since that time, he's been presented with the keys to Panama City and has also been deemed a national hero. On a club level, Torres has already proven that he has a knack for stepping up on big occasions, whether it was battling back from a serious knee injury and earning a place in the Sounders starting 11 or scoring the winning penalty kick to earn Seattle's first MLS Cup. His experience may prove to be crucial for a Panama team that some might underestimate going into the tournament. To analyze each player a little closer, we'll start by taking a look at their base stats and showcasing some of their best gameplay clips over roughly five matches. Guillermo Ochoa will feature as our goalkeeper for this squad, who's looking to carry on from his excellent form in the 2014 World Cup for Mexico. It comes as no surprise that Ochoa's standout stat is his reflexes, which in my opinion is the most important stat as a goalkeeper in FIFA 18. While it can be frustrating to have some shots parried away to your opponent, Ochoa was solid in between the sticks for the matches I played. To be honest, I didn't know much about the left back Luis Carlos Ovale going into the squad builder. Panama's not a one-man team with just Torres, so I wanted to represent that by having multiple players from the national team in this squad. While he was a defensive liability against some of the elite attackers, I would say that he didn't play too poorly and he definitely outplayed his rating. We've already touched on Torres' role for Panama, but one thing that I do want to mention about his World Cup card is the massive increase to his pace. In the early stages of the game mode where not everyone has those top tier players, I found Torres was completely usable and he wasn't caught out on counterattacks too often. I was lucky enough to pack Carlos Puyol by opening premium packs and while he might not be the best center back icon, he is still a rock in the back. His defending statistics are unlikely to be matched by many players and he was a major help to our team. Having the option to choose any European right back, I decided to select Daniel Carvajal who is kind of my go-to player in my main squad, at least at the right back position. I'm not too picky about which fullbacks I use. All that I look for is that for their preferred foot to be on the same side that they play on and for their pace to be right around the 80 mark. While Torgan Hazard might not be the first Hazard brother that you think of, he has an incredibly balanced card in both Ultimate Team and the World Cup game mode. Ever since he made the move to the Bundesliga, I feel like he's continued to grow as a player and it will be interesting to see what sort of role he plays for Belgium in the World Cup. Svensson served as a holding midfielder in this squad, which is kind of necessary considering his pace and low attack work rates. Defensively, he was able to make some key tackles and I found that his passing was sufficient for a central midfielder. One gripe I have about this card is the 45 shooting, which makes long shots outside the box pretty unlikely. Rui Costa is our second icon in the team and was the more attacking of our two central midfielders in the squad. Coincidentally, he was my first icon in both regular foot and the World Cup game mode, so he seems to follow me around wherever I go. I'm a big fan of this card in game to the fact that you can use him anywhere from the center mid position forwards. Julian Draxler is starting to become an increasingly prominent player in the German national team and I'm excited to see what sort of contribution he can make for Die Mannschaft. His car is another one of my favorites in foot, particularly for that five-star weak foot. Moving on to our strikers, we'll start off with my single favorite card in the World Cup mode, Timo Werner. 
Career mode players will know this guy for his time at Stuttgart, but since making a move to RB Leipzig, he's become a star forward in the Bundesliga. He's also a vastly different striker to what Germany has traditionally used in the past, so his pace might be a game changer. Our final player in this squad is Marcus Berg, who has an interesting background. He's played in a variety of leagues during his playing career and now finds himself in the UAE Golf League. It'll be interesting to see how his level of play will carry over and if he can have the same goal production for country as he had last year for club. That's going to bring a wrap to this World Cup edition of Sounders Player Spotlight, but with the tournament set to get underway later this week, I'd love to keep the conversation going after this video is released. Let me know in the comment section which groups you'd prefer to see a squad builder around and if there are any other aspects you'd like to see in these videos. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to leave a like. But until next time, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to you again soon.